Hey, Brainiacs, this is a brand new thing that I'm trying uh, today for the first time. I hope to make this something that comes up on the show as well. We're actually planning our second one already, but today is actually a live play RPG one-shot campaign, if you're not real familiar with role-playing games. You've probably heard of like Dungeons and Dragons or some of those kinds of games where you roll a dice in a sort of collaborative storytelling exercise slash game. And uh, a one-shot is when you do one that is basically simple, scaled-down rules, generally speaking, uh, that people can learn and play. And this one in particular, I wrote it to be done within within an hour that you can sit down and do it. One of the reasons that I'm doing that on here is that RPGs and tabletop games of all kinds are really blowing up. That They're very, very popular. It's something I was introduced through social skill training that I do. I do a, a game-based and activity-based social skills group once a week. And I've been looking and experimenting with using these things for, for much, uh, you know, much more therapeutic work as well as they're pretty dang fun. So I thought I would bring some of that to get people to thinking about this and how it relates to mental health. There's actually a, a recent really interesting article about this connection. It's called uh, Dungeons and Dragons Role for Better Mental Health uh, by Paul McClure. You can find that at newatlas.com. Uh, there's reading that too, if you want to read more about that. So it's something I'm going to talk about a little bit here and there, do some episodes about. And uh, and those of you uh, who are Patreon members, I'm also putting together a kind of making of special that talked about how I approached creating this game. If you want to do something like this to create either for social skill trainings uh, for young people or or practice getting to know other people, bonding, community building. And all those kinds of mental health benefits. It's something that many people find as a creative outlet as well. So I was lucky enough to have some uh, some of the people you're going to hear are, are former or future also guests uh, from, from the Broken Brain. And they're just people who I have met, friends of mine through the podcast sphere. And so, yeah, we'll take it away now and hope you uh, enjoy this special different type of episode as we <laughs> play a little game about escaping from a barbecue gone wrong. This is the game H-E Double. Record that too. I love how Zoom moves the record button with every update so that I can never find it when it updates. Oh, for real. <laughs> Recording in progress. All right. That officially proves that everybody knows they're being recorded. So no, uh, no backsies. No takesies backsies, everybody. Um, since we are playing a game is why I thought I'd start with no takesies backsies. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome everybody who is out there listening to this very special episode of the broken brain, I'm trying something new that we have not done before on the show, which is the use of R P and G's, which is role-playing games. Um, something that I've been doing in my therapy practice for social every weekly I do a social skills group where we use a lot of RPGs uh, and an ongoing D and D campaign, and just kind of engaging with more of that. Uh, just this as an aside, everybody who's listening, if you want to go to my website, dwighthurst.com slash RPG, I, I've tried to make a little page there where you can download a lot of free, um, either short or simple kind of uh, uh, RPG kind of things if you want to that are. Uh, around the web that seem useful. And I've, I've uploaded a couple of the ones that I uh, have written as well. You can find a bunch of Santas, our Christmas-themed RPG that I put together with that group uh, that I was in, and also a Leprechaun or Leprechant, the St. Patrick's Day, uh, that one that I uploaded with apologies to anyone who's Irish um, as an American making an RPG focused on leprechauns for St. Patrick's Day. So uh, anyway, but, you know, I... We do what we can here in America to not be offensive. Um, not always, not always <laughs> very well, I guess. So I, hope. Yeah, I guess we don't always do. Yeah, at yeah, all. we don't yeah. always do very well. That's a shocker. Most of the world out there, international <laughs> listeners, are surprised to hear that about Americans. But hey, you know that's what you tune in for is these little factoids. So I'm going to try to uh, share some more of these episodes going into it, and uh, not coincidentally, this game that we're going to play today is another sort of one-shot RPG that I have created. Uh, it partially uses what's called the Rysis system, which is another one that's uh, free or cheap to, to find different places. It's a little bit adapted from that. And um, for those of you who are in the Patreon, there's going to be a little bit of a making of that we'll talk about how this was made. But uh, this, this game, which is called HE Double, uh, 
is uh, going to be available on the site as well. Uh, from Partially from the feedback we get from this experience of playing it and seeing how it goes, I'll get it written up and, and share that hopefully soon around when this episode is released. You can find that as well. And if not, just check the website. Every day, click on every page. It helps with SEO. So really, thanks for that, guys. All right. Well, I am super grateful to be joined by some some friends of mine that I have met out there in podcast land and e- even one IRL friend uh, that I that I've met uh, that we knew each other a long time ago. Oh, we go way back. <laughs> so, I'm going to introduce everybody a little bit. First, I've got uh, the voice you just heard was Jamie Downs, who is here for shits and giggles, according to your intro. Uh, yes, and I also am a dungeon master for a 3.5 D&D campaign. Yes! So it's what... be interesting to be on the other side of the dice for the, for the day. <laughs> a DM extraordinaire here to, you can give me a grade at the end of how, how you feel like it went. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we've known each other since childhood. Wow, that's a long time. For some of us, it's a longer time than others, childhood. Oh, God, isn't that the truth? <laughs> Also, uh, also joined by the wonderful Leslie Mansell, lifelong unapologetic geek and weirdo, can be found on Twitter, Insta, and TikTok as at geekily underscore me. Thanks for being here, Leslie. I am so glad to be here. <laughs> I'm familiar with some of your your work uh, on uh, through the Paprika uh, podcast you've been on, talking a lot of things with Daryl, who's been on the show too. Your husband, Daryl. Yes, yes, I was. Uh part of the choose our own adventure um podcast and yeah did some um some of the drafts mm-hmm. that were a lot of fun won the first star wars draft i'm very proud of that's right for that. <laughs> <laughs> i also have a piece of your art hanging on my wall in my office you as well do. from your etsy yeah. shop so and uh then we are also joined by london smith or Dr. London Smith.com. Ding. If you know, you know. That's the sound that you make mm-hmm. on your show. Uh, from the Jock Doc podcast on social media, you are at Dr. London Smith and also at Jock Doc podcast. And you're the creator of that show, as well as probably other things that you've accomplished in your life. Agreed. Yeah. No, I've, uh, ooh, other comp, uh, high school. I did high school. Um, Later, on, I, I would go on to do med school as well. But really, it's the high school diploma that's that's carrying me at this point, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, of your accomplishments, the MD's got to be somewhere in there, right? Yeah, no, it's, so yeah, I've got a few those. degrees, but I'd say it, so. high school is really, it's what carries me now. <laughs> well, those skills you learn. You hope. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that you've got, at least got that to fall back on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, we are going to to dive on in. In a moment, everyone will be able to meet the characters uh, that these individuals uh, are wonderfully able to play in this game. Let me give a quick update for anyone listening. The way that this game is going to work is this is what we call a simple one-shot a game that is organized around a simple rules. Everybody's going to use six-sided dice to determine success in actions. If there's any actions we determine that are uncertain in their outcome, the GM or game manager, which is me, will uh, determine that that needs to be rolled. So you can use a different number of dice to get a higher number. And when you roll for an action, the higher number will win. I will be rolling against the players to see if they are successful in their actions. Uh, Each of the players has picked three personality attributes, which will gain special powers. And by special powers, we just mean they can roll more dice. So everyone in this game picks three attributes before the game. For me, it was interesting to hear what they were before, so I could kind of throw some things that might be be a little bit tailored to your personalities. So everyone listening, you'll understand what those are in a minute when they introduce themselves. But essentially... One attribute will give you the ability to roll four dice when you do an action that is tied to skills that come from that attribute. The other two will give you the ability to roll three. Some of the challenges and characters that you will encounter in the adventure will be rolling uh, usually two, three, or four dice at least as well, which will make it more challenging for some than for others. So that is a good intro, I hope for everyone to understand a little bit how that works. So it's based off, like I said, the Rice's system and is even a little less complicated than that system as well, which is already not that complicated. Um, Yeah, does that sound good? Does everybody understand that? Is is it work okay? We can, we'll get into it, the play, but. Yeah, I figure we'll find out. Yeah, all right. (laughs) That's what I 
figure as well. So, <laughs> all right. So we are going ahead in. Let me grab my adventure notes here. So it is late in the summer. Each of you individually is driving your car, riding your bike, however it is, riding a scooter, jogging, however it is that you choose to relay yourself to a typical suburban neighborhood. It is a typical late summer afternoon. It's a little unusually hot. Although I say that, I realize out there in the world right now, it's unusually hot every, everywhere, it seems. But especially for so late in the summer, it's a little, a little extra warm, it seems. Especially as you get closer to your destination, it seems a little more warm, a little more warm. You pass a bunch of typical suburban houses on this typical street. People are typically mowing their lawns and putting out their typical trash cans, big, huge green or blue trash cans for recycling and garbage. You park your typical vehicle. You get out in a typical way. It crosses your mind that you don't usually use the word typical quite this often, but there's just something so almost oppressively, aggressively normal about this neighborhood, as if it was designed to put you at ease, so much so that the dullness of this neighborhood is honed to a fine point. You pull up at your destination, which is the house of your friend Max, Max Demonlin, who has invited you to a late summer barbecue. <laughs> as you pull up, you see two other Typical people that have also arrived. You all see each other. This is the first time you've met. As you walk up, you kind of uh, bump into each other, and you notice that each one of you is holding an identical invitation in your hands that says, I sure hope that you make it to my barbecue. XOXOXO Max. And uh, the word hope is large embossed gold letters standing up on, on the invitation. Since you all know that you're going to the same place, this is a chance for everybody to introduce yourselves to each other. So why don't we go ahead and uh, let's let's uh, just tell each other player your name and your three attributes. Do you want to go first, London? Yeah, and sorry, am I doing a character name or am I doing my whichever character? Name? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Farius. Um, hey, nice to meet you. I see you've all got these envelopes. One thing I'm wondering about these cards is how much it costs because to get the raised letters and everything, like, I don't know, like, I couldn't afford this for my parties. Uh, but I really like to befriend pet rocks. Um, and I'm a contortionist. I don't know if you saw me pulling up, but that was me just lumbering my way over with my legs weird. Um, and I also am really good at staring at the sun. I love my son stare at her. So, I uh, hope these qualities will help me in today's uh, going it. And hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Silva. Um, I I know, right? These these envelopes are so. They're not the envelopes. <laughs> the invitations are so fancy. Mm -hmm. I really like them. Um, but I'm I'm a lumberjack. I got my nice little axe here. That's why I carry that around. Um, I'm just so excited to be here. I also just, you know, really love books. I'm a bibliophile. And I, I didn't drive because I'm a hiker. I love hiking. So I just walked my way here. It's so nice to meet you. And I am Lily. And I uh, am a librarian. Um, I do some art on the side. So this looks like something from a nice Etsy shop, frankly these envelopes um i also um do a little bit of break dancing on the side um and i uh moonwalked most of the way here as you get to know everyone you realize that everyone is not quite so typical that they're a great great individual and that everyone seems to have some diverse talents and abilities um uh, however, uh, just, just as soon as you start to think that, boy, it feels almost wrong to think of something being special or individualized or to try to get that kind of hope. As you're still coping with why that is, all of a sudden, you look over and you see your host, Max, Max Demonlin, coming out of his backyard, opening a typical vinyl fence uh, gate and saying, hey, come on, come on in. As you're walking up, each of you take just a moment to think to yourselves, how did you meet Max? You find that all of a sudden uh, that that question becomes very, very fuzzy. 
Does anyone have any thoughts about where you met Max? And keep in mind, you don't really, you can't quite remember exactly. What I've seen him at the library. I thought I saw him out 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 at the at the park when I was hiking. Ugh, this guy. Uh, I like I ha- gotta assume he saw me at the grocery store. Or like I don't know. Um, but no, gr- great. Like it's once again, you always want to meet your fans and whatever. Sure, sure. Well. <laughs> See what his thing is. <laughs> As you're you're starting to wonder about that, Max uh, says, "Come on in." Beckons you into the yard. Right before you step in the yard, you notice he has a, a sort of a a box on a little table set off just right right outside the fence. And he's like, "Oh, oh, here, here, I'll take that." And he he gathers your invitations from you, and with you and and turns and says, "I'll just abandon those in here real quick." Drops them into the box as you as you walk by. And you are now in the yard. As you come in the yard, he walks by you, closes up the gate, and you notice that the white vinyl fence has this weird reddish hue. You you notice up in the sky when it was a bright sunny day before, now it seems like there's these kind of dark clouds over. You can't really see the sunlight. You look around and, boy, the heat has increased and you notice the grass is all prickly and burned and... There's a whole bunch of people here that are just milling around, milling around. And um, why don't, uh, by the way, each of you roll one D6 and just yell out what number you get. Five. One. Two. Okay. So we are going to go with that. The, the reason we just rolled that, so everybody knows, is for the order when we take our turns. So it's going to be go Jamie, London, Leslie when, when you have a turn, what to do. So as you look around, all of a sudden you have this moment of clarity where you're like, something is very wrong. I don't think I'm in a good place. Your, your, your memory starts to clarify a little bit, and you remember that you don't really know Max that well. You saw him one time, and all of a sudden you just felt compelled to come to this, this, this barbecue. Once you had released the invitation, you feel like the loss of that invitation, in fact, even the loss of the hope that it indicated, and you wonder, can I ever even get out of this yard? Max looks at you and he says, hey, I can tell you're starting to realize just like everybody does when you come in, hey, you know, no hard feelings. Um, I know you don't really deserve to be here, but, uh, you know, I'm I'm sort of an agent of eternal punishment uh, that's trying to get a certain number of souls to be trapped forever to let me off the hook. You get it, right? Uh, just the way it is, like I say, it's nothing personal. But hey, while you're here, mill about, have some food, have a good time. You stagger around. Struggling once again against this typical, typical boredom, boredom feeling. Uh, You notice that there are, once again, people milling about. They all just seem to be barely moving. They're barely conscious. In fact, some are sitting over in some typical Adirondack chairs over in the corner of the yard. They seem almost comatose, just glazed over. Even Max's dog is just kind of sitting there, barely poking at a, a bowl of water that is... It looks like it's evaporating very quickly in the heat. You notice the table full of food and two grills that are out. In fact, even the food looks very bland. You've got some uh, grocery store uh, f- pre-frozen patties with barely any salt on them sitting on the grill. You've got uh, you've got uh, hamburger buns that are the kind that kind of stick together when you try to pull them apart. It just rips them to shreds. There's some veggie dogs on the grill, and not good veggie dogs. These are the bad veggie dogs that, that I don't even think they make anymore because the ones they make now are, are much more. These have probably been sitting on a shelf for a while. There's easy listening jazz coming out of a tinny speaker. You also notice a little shed. The, uh, there is cooking gear and kind of kitchen-esque kind of stuff in there, but most of it hasn't even been used, even though it's there, which makes it even more annoying. So as, you're, as you are uh, uh, looking around at this party and you notice everyone getting more and more satiated, more and more bored, you, you feel, oh, there's this oppressive feeling of being there. Max encourages you again, eat some food. Come on, just eat some food and... Chill out. Just chill. Chill, chill, chill. All right. Uh, Lily, you go first. What do you what do you want to do? I don't know, guys. Like, you know, I'll go to any party. That's why I'm here, even though I, you know, 
didn't even know, th- didn't realize I, I didn't know Max that well, but who serves gruel at a freaking barbecue? Um, I'm going to look around to see if there's anyone that's semi-conscious that I'm going to use my artist's eye to actually, maybe my librarian screening eye to um, see if anyone, you know, shows any sign of life besides us and see if I can talk to them. Can I do that? Absolutely. And so everyone knows listening with the way that we use the attributes is if you can justify to the GM why this ability that you're going to try to use comes from one of your attributes, you get to use the dice assigned to that. Is this a three or a four, your librarian skill? Uh, four. Okay. And just so everyone knows, if you do something and you can't think of a way to tie it to an attribute, you only get to roll one dice against that. So, okay, you're rolling, you said four? Yeah, I rolled a 10. Okay, you rolled a 10. And I rolled a five against you. So you succeeded on your roll. As you look around, uh, what are you trying to, you're trying to intuit kind of if anybody is not just uh, bored and comatose? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like, are there any, is there anyone that looks putting pieces together fresher to the area like than the others, like a little less zombie-esque? Okay. Or- yes. Yes. Great. You you notice uh, uh, one young man over in the corner who seems a little bouncy and agitated. That seems like he's kind of moving around. And he, in fact, he says he looks over and says, "Hey, don't you work at the library?" I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it, it's so weird. I just I just read I, I just read the, the the Great Gatsby on the way over here, and it was on the recommended list as one of the best. Uh, it was oh, I'm so, so sorry, not mine. I know it was really depressing, and I was so agitated by it, and 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 so angry at some of the characters that I I can't. Re- but now I can't recall even their names. Uh, a bunch of rich jerks, and boy, I hate rich jerks. And I was so boy, I was so mad, but I don't feel mad anymore. But but I feel like I should. I want to feel mad, but I can't feel mad anymore. Oh gosh, I think it was. And I had that burger. I had that burger. Ooh, it really weighs me down. And oh, here comes. Uh, it looks like the sky is going to rain again. And eh, you know what? Who cares? I mean, so eh, it just doesn't matter. So I just watch this guy zombify in front of me. He's starting to mellow more and more as you as you see him. Yep. All right. Awesome. L- London, you're next. What you going to do? I should say Ferris, uh, Ferris, right? Uh, yeah, Ferris, yeah, Ferris. like a nefarious person, but without the ne. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, really, just all this talk about. I haven't had lunch yet, so I am gonna go ahead and have one of the whatever bland looking foods. Uh, let's go. Let's go for hot dog, but without the veggie, because I hear bad things about the veggies. <laughs> okay, so you grab a hot dog, and you get a bun. Uh, yes, yes, okay. I'll get a bun. And is there must, are there condiments to be had? No. Okay. Nothing. It's okay. It's okay. I just prefer them that way. Okay. It's, it's good. It's uh, honestly, this is fine. You take a bite, and all of a sudden, and the first thought you have is, ew, this is not a very good hot dog. The very mm-hmm. next thing that happens is you're like, but who cares? You know, what is life? That anyway? does sound like my thought process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna uh, you're gonna roll to try to resist. A deep, deep, boring, zombifying feeling that you're starting to have. Do you feel like any of okay. your abilities would enhance the resistance of that? Um, I, I, I'll I, admit now, I should have looked around for Pet Rock or The Sun, but I did not do any of those before this. Uh, so I think I'm going to be <laughs> going in pretty powerless. Uh, so how many dice does that, does that mean one dice? One dice if dice. there's nothing that, yeah. That okay, yeah, yeah, there. nothing to help me here. Okay. Okay, I got a four. And I'm rolling two for this uh, effect, and that actually is a ten. So no way you could beat that one. Yes, you go down. And what you're uh, noticing now is I'm going to pick one at random. Your pet rock befriending skill for the uh, for the for, for a while is going to be knocked down from. Is it a yeah. three or a four? Uh, 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 let's say three. That's a three. Now it's going to be a two for a little while. Okay. Boy, howdy. Well, at least I got to eat. Sylvie. Um, So as as they entered, uh, Silva noticed that um, he used that weird phrase, he abandoned the invitations and 
And, you know, with her love of books, she she noticed that, you know, with the hope that that seemed to be referencing uh, Dante's Inferno, Abandon Hope, All Ye Who Enter Here. And so she looks around with that knowledge to see if there's anything else that sort of references that that she could, you know, notice or use. Okay. Very good. This is your bibliophile skill? Yes. Okay. What what is that a three or four? You can roll uh three. Three. So go ahead and roll three dice. Eleven. Eleven. And I rolled an eight, so you succeed in this. One thing that you notice that stands out is that everything looks a little picked over, um, except the the potato salad. The potato salad, by the way, has the most offensive ingredient in it that potato salad can have. And you get to pick, what is that? What should potato salad never have? Raisins. Raisins. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It looks like we did drop. Oh, Jamie's back. We so There are raisins in the potato salad, and nobody has even touched it. There is a big spoon sitting next to it that is completely clean. And, and as you notice, this big heaping bowl of gross potato salad with raisins, you can you can kind of detect that it seems in a weird way sort of lumpy, like there's something inside of it. You're, all of a sudden you get images of Treasure Island and and digging and, and Jim Hawkins digging for treasure. Um, yeah, I want to take that spoon and just kind of mush into the middle and see if anything's there. Okay. You you stab into the middle, and sure enough, there's a solid thunk that you pull out. Luckily, there's also some bottled waters that are half empty, actually, and the tops are off most of them, and some solo cups full of water, but you can't tell whose is whose. There's a marker for writing people's names, but it's dead. It's like a dry erase marker. It's not working. And uh, so you take a cup, douse this object, wash off the potato salad, and what you found is a golden H. A golden H in the potato salad. I'd like to to kind of motion to the other two. Be like, hey guys, guys, look what I found. I, I think we need to find hope. Maybe all, all of a sudden you you hear the person next to you, the guy who read the Great Gatsby, he turns around and he's like, huh? And another person turns around and says, huh? And another person. And, and slowly they start to notice what you're holding. All of a sudden you see Max across the yard turns around and he's like, what? The H? And then as everybody starts to notice it, they start to turn around and say, hey, what's going on with these burgers? Come on, Max. Somebody goes in the shed and they pull out seasoning salt and they start putting it on. Somebody else changes the radio station. All of a sudden, someone's like, the resistance is here. And they start sort of doing that weird jiggle dance. And everybody is starting to actually engage in the party. And Max is like, no, no, hey, everybody, stop it, stop it. Be bored again. As this is all happening, you notice that in the shed, there is a doorway in the floor that slowly opens up and a staircase going down. Um, hey, guys, what do you think I'm, that is? Yeah, I'm curious about the stairway. Um, I'm going to go <clears throat> investigate and poke my head down there. Yes, yes. As you get over there, um, you can see, uh, basically, you can see down down the staircase, there's kind of a hallway going somewhere as um as you do that you do hear max kind of right behind you saying like talking into a, a weird little cell phone saying like turn the reins on and all of a sudden there's a downpour of rain and you kind of you start to notice that as the rain hits everybody they start to dull back down and zombify and of course you're in the shed so you're not getting hit by this water at this point well guys i think this party's beat um <laughs> I'm going to make an Irish exit. Um, <laughs> nice. Anybody come with me? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll do. I'll go. That was a while. Uh, I, I haven't finished this hot dog yet, but I'll bring it with me. <laughs> Is it that good? Uh, no, I mean, it's... <laughs> You're hungry. Like, I just, like, what are you going to... I'm kind of bored. Okay. So I might as well eat, you know? I, oh, Fair enough. enough. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys are taking the Golden H with you. 
Oh, yes. I have not let that out of my hands. All right. So you get the H out of there with you, and you go down the stairs. London, you feel the boredom uh, alleviate, and your dice are all back to where they were before. Okay. But but I I still have the chance to take another bite if I need to. That's true. If you decide you want to impair yourself in that way. You come down into this hallway, and in this hallway, there's a hot wind blowing down the hallway. It's a little uncomfortable. In fact, it makes it hard to walk forward. Um, as you walk down, you do see a sign on the on the wall uh, that says, uh, don't look back. Just don't look back. That's the main thing. Lean forward and don't look back. So as you walk down the hallway, you notice that at the end of the hallway, there's some some motion, but you can't really see. It's a huge, it's just a bright, fiery light that makes it hard to even tell uh, how long the hallway is. As you're trying and pushing and walking down this hallway, you see a few items. There is a, uh, there is a slight uh, a broom closet that is slightly ajar. You can see brooms and dustpans and stuff in there. You see ahead of you some large object covered with a tarp. There's an alphanumeric keypad on the wall as well. And as you walk down the hall, the, the wind gets fiercer and fiercer. Fiercier and fiercer the more that mm-hmm. you go down. And I think that's all the objects you can see now. Yes. All right. Lily, uh, I want to. What are you going to do? L- oh, sorry. Oh, we got to go uh, turn. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah. Nice try. F- yeah, nefarious. nefarious. All right. Uh, Lily, what are you going to do? I am going to be contrary because I don't like this hot wind in my face. And I'm going to spin around and moonwalk down the hallway. All right. Uh, when you spin around. What do I see? When you. Uh, so now uh, let me just make. Just, just, just to clarify, are you now? Which way are you facing? I'm facing back the way we came. Okay, so you did turn. I'm around. looking back. I You're am looking, looking back. back. Immediately, you feel a strange sort of change. You feel a little bit, uh, oh, just a little bit off. And as the other, your other two companions look over and notice that you have shifted and changed. You look pretty much the same, except you are now made of salt. The the. A uh, breakdancing skill that you are now uh, using. What, how many dice is that for the breakdancing skill, by the way? Uh, three dice. Three um, dice. I guess maybe what I want to do is try to spin around before it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> now, you are yes. sentient. You are still sentient and conscious, but uh, you, your, your breakdancing skill is, is now reduced one dice. So you can only roll two, but you can still roll to see uh, how far you get down the hall. Yeah, I'm going to... Um... Do a uh, little flipperoo um, and uh, not face that way anymore. <laughs> All right, uh, you can you can roll though to see how far you got down the hall. Um. Oh, well, I rolled a seven. Is that, or do you want me to? Oh, you say how me. far I got. Okay. Yeah, you beat me. so you get about halfway down the hall. Um, you still can't quite make out what's at the end, but it does seem you can see sort of a general kind of a motion. Uh, that's happening in the middle of the bright light. All right. So, uh, Farius, what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, I will say, uh, Lily, though, you are noticing as you get down the hall, little bits of salt are blowing off, and you are concerned that if you get lose too much salt, that might be bad. Maybe yeah. not the best way to lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You yeah, never that's a know. new trend. They'll let the research bear out in the long run. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I look into the, given my sun stare at her skills, I do look into the flaming, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, to try to discern what's happening. All right. Roll for that. Okay. I got a, that's, I, so I do four dice for a thing. Yes. If that's your primary uh, attribute. Uh, yeah, yeah. It has four. Uh, yeah. Five, six, five, two. What's that? Oh, okay, so you beat, yeah, I only got nine. So you are able to see what is at the end of the hall is a giant fan. And that uh, behind the giant fan, there is a bright sort of burning fire. But under that, there is an exit door, uh, or a door at least. And there is a big switch on an on-off switch behind the fan. But it's behind the fan. Mm-hmm. And the fan takes up, it'd be very hard to get around the fan. Okay. All right. Sylvie, what are you going to do? Um, I have 
was a hiker and dealt with fierce winds before. (laughs) So um, I'm going to uh, turn sideways to kind of lower my profile and and crouch a bit so that I have a lower center of gravity. And I'm going to try to just edge my way up the hallway. Okay. Roll for hiking. Fourteen, you have succeeded against a nine, and you are able to get a little bit past the point. You are now uh, past uh, Lily, Salt Lily, and uh, you are kind of you're you're about even with where there's that. Once again, there's a keypad on the wall. You've passed that a little bit, and the broom closet is now a bit behind you. And then there is an item, uh, of course, under the tarp that you're about even with. So you're about two thirds of the way down the hall. Let's see now. Okay. Let's see everybody. Go ahead. Uh, you're going to roll to resist. The, the, at least the two of you that are not salt, you're going to roll to resist the te- the temptation to look behind you. You hear a voice saying, look behind you. Come on. Come on. Look behind you. Come on. Come on. There might be interesting stuff back there. Don't you want to know? Come on. Look, there's, there's your, you're past some of your com- compatriots. Don't you want to know they're there? Okay. Come on. Turn around. So go ahead. If you Can you think of any way that your skills would help you to not want to turn around? Uh, with the knowledge of all of the horror books that I've read, I know listening to that voice is a terrible idea. <laughs> all right. Roll at your bibliophile. Ooh, gosh, I got a really bad roll. You guys are probably okay. And then, London, do you have any skills or attributes that would help you to not turn around? I mean, honestly, I'm thinking, like, could this be a pet rock for me to hang out with? So if I, if anything, it's pushing me the other way. Okay, so you're looking ahead for rocks? Yeah, okay. just anywhere to find a rock, yeah, to be okay. my friend. How, go ahead and roll your pet rock roll. I rolled a 10. Okay, so oh, you were successful. Be... Uh, Sylvie was successful and did not look back. Okay, and I got two, four, and two. Oh, so eight total. <laughs> See, that's helpful. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you actually, I got a really bad roll. I got like a five. So with the yes. dice, so you see a little rock up there and it, it it looks almost, it's got this little pattern in the granite that looks like, almost like eyes. And you can almost see one wink at you in the shadow makes it look like it's winking. <laughs> so uh, that distracts you enough that you don't turn around. Yeah. Right. Oh, for sure. Uh, Salt Lily, what are you going to do? I am, um, am I past, well, first off, um, from last round, um, I didn't see anything except for the hallway. Basically, we came down, like, when I turned around, right? Yeah, it or just did looked I like something? the same, okay. it just looked like the same thing. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna, is the broom closet in front of or behind me? Yeah, it's, it's you could get there if you want to. Okay, um, I want to go grab the broom that's in the broom closet. Okay. You can do that. You don't have to roll for that. What are you going to do with it? Okay. I am going to, once we get close to the fan, stick it in there to see if I can stop the fan. Ooh, great, great idea. Okay. And uh, let's see. Do you want to roll to try to get close enough to the fan? You yeah. Mostly what do you want me to roll? Before. Uh, well, it's up to you. Can you think of a way to help yourself walk better? Well, I always walk with flair. <laughs> All um, right. Using the flair or strength, the, the the strength that you gained from breakdancing, you could. I mean, you could yeah, which is still only two oh. dice, right? Yeah, yeah. All of your dice salty. are limited one while you're salt. I'm super salty. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, go uh, eleven, eleven, and oof, we are we did get a tie. I've neglected to say at the beginning though that tie does go to players, so you Hooray! are able to get up to the fan, and you are you you stick. The broomstick in the fan. You hear a whack, boom, pow. All of a sudden, the mechanism is cracked. You, as the the broom comes whacking around and hits you, you explode into a cloud of salt. But hooray! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I I clap, I clap, I cheer. (laughs) But, But as the door opens up, you notice that the door behind the fan opens up. And you're able to safely move the fan. Uh, everybody's able to safely move the fan off to the side. 
And uh, now that the the door is opened, uh, a blast of fresh air blows in, and your all your salt seems to come back together into a person. I was going to ask if I was again. like a sentient puddle or pile or something like that. <laughs> no. So so what it ends up looking like is like a boom of salt, and then you kind of appear in the middle as if as if you emerged, and it looks cool as hell. I'm a badass. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well done. You have so you have. Oh, and as you do so, <laughs> I'm sorry. What what did I uh, miss here? Um, you what you uh, you also find right past the fan. Uh, the you you find that when it broke, there is one of the little rings, one of the little uh, socket rings that was screwed on there. Seems a little brighter than the others. You happen to pick it up. It's a round piece, a uh, round uh, a sort of seal that is made of gold, actually, and it is an O, as it turns out. So ho ho ho. <laughs> Now, as you walk in, you walk through this door, and all of a sudden, you're out in this very interesting-looking garden. You take a deep breath, and the first thing you smell is the beautiful, wonderful smell of honeysuckle that quickly turns into a skunky, gross smell. So it's just enough that each time you breathe, your brain is like, wants to breathe it, and then it turns nasty, which is just kind of mean, you feel like. Um, it is a it is a fancy garden inside the garden. There's a like just a garden furniture there that's all kind of charred and burned and beat up. Everywhere you look, every plant is burning. There's fire on every plant. Um, to the the left, as you walk in, there is uh, some shrubberies and and a, a large bush that is on fire. Ahead of you, you see uh, you see five oh, trees. Four of them are regular sized apple trees. The one in bet- and then the one in the middle is a big thick heavy tree that uh, uh, is just a kind of s- it's just kind of sitting there which might sound like a weird qualifier except for the fact that the other four trees are kind of moving around they have a little bonfire in front of them they can't they're they're rooted to the ground but they're moving their limbs and pulling apples off of themselves and roasting apples in this little fire hmm. you also notice max's dog from the party, Max, uh, uh, Demonland's dog, is sitting at a table with a mug that is also on fire. And he turns to you as you come in and goes, this is fine. So, and that is what, that is what we can see. As you step in, uh, you, oh, no, yes, you also notice there is another tree with a little cutout portion that is a little library with a little door, like those little mini libraries. As you come in, one of the trees turns and says, hey. Who are these guys? All right, guys, let's give them the Wizard of Oz treatment. And they take these roasted apples and start chucking them at you. Okay, so everybody roll to dodge a flaming apple. Hold on. As as I'm leaving, can I pick up that pet rock uh, that I befriended? Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Yes, that's important. So was, everybody roll. I was going to ask if I should have checked under the tarp, but I assume... We yeah. moved past that and it's fine. We past it. It's okay. fine. It was yeah. another thing, but we don't have to. Yeah. That's okay. part of this is, uh, you know, we have a flexibility kind of around it. So, so everybody roll to dodge. Okay, so what skill are you using, by the way? Just tell me what attribute and then Contortionist. Okay. Go ahead and roll for that. Got an eight. Okay. And then, uh, uh, so let's see. That is a, well, uh, Let's everybody roll real quick. Sylvie, oh, yeah. what are you using to – Sylvie and Lily, what are you using as your skill to dodge? I'm a uh, pop, drop, and lock again. Okay, um, nice. <laughs> So I got a um, 10. Okay. And Sylvie, what did you get? Uh, or what are you using? I, I, I don't – feel like it doesn't really tie into anything I have. Let's see. And anyone can feel free to help if you can think of a justification for a lumberjack, bibliophile, or hiker skill. And and your your co-players can help if they have an idea. Oh, you can try to chop the thing out of the air with your lumberjacking. Okay. Oh, there you go. True. I could. I, okay, yes, I will try to chop it out of the air. Let's... Well. Okay. So everybody, uh, everybody succeeded. I rolled an eight, which is a tie with uh, Lennon's roll, but uh, tie goes to player. 
And so everybody succeeds. Uh, Jamie, you, uh, I'm sorry, Lily, you do a fancy pop and lock and it weaves almost slow motion right in front of your face as you do so, but uh, it doesn't hit you. And Sylvie does a slow motion axe chop that looks so cool and separates right down the middle of the flaming apple as it goes. And, uh, oh, and uh, uh, Farius, you didn't mention, so when you contort, how do you uh, move? Yeah, I, I just did the Matrix thing. I lean back really far and I doze for a second. I'm so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and as you do so do you make like a ring or anything with your arms uh for this one yes yes okay so it goes <laughs> I, right I in between so you're not only dodging yeah. you're doing it in a cocky show-off way which is pretty yeah awesome. okay so now let's go through our turns lily what are you going to do i'm sorry lily what's that yes you're first oh okay um this well, is practice for witness I go protection, by the way. So when you have a character name, you got to, you know. Oh, right. No, totally. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Totally. Thompson. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go check out the library. I assume there's a little bit of cover there as well. Uh, there is, yes. So you open it up and you see uh, two books inside the library. One is Goodnight Moon and the other is a Guide to Languages. And there's a bookmark in it that indicates the um, – the a language called ent e n t well um i've already you know have heard good night moon many 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 times so i'm going to look a little bit closer at the language book um and uh see if i can uh decipher okay. any vocab or grammatical structure from this language here okay roll for Point librarian out. all right Big money, no whammies. <laughs> All right. Math. 14. Okay. Yes, that uh, that beats a 12. So, All right. You, uh, as you do so, you notice the Ent language, and actually you find that it's very close to some other languages that you've learned in your librarian skill. You're able to pronounce out loud the first phrase that it does, uh, that, that is there. And as you do so, the big tree in the middle shakes, and all of a sudden it opens up these big eyes, and it stands up, and he says, I'm from Lord of the Rings, if anyone didn't know what that reference was. And he stands up, stretches his arms. You notice that uh, as he stretches his arms, they stretch over. They overhang the other four trees. He's way bigger than the other than the other trees. All right. So uh, let's see. So you have woken up an ant. F uh, Farius, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to consult with my rock, my pet rock, see if he has any insight for the situation because it's the, all the fire is pretty scary to me. Okay. Um, I am going to, I don't have a, a sort of prearranged how much that would be for that <laughs> roll back. So I'm just going to go with kind of my standard, which is two. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. To see if you, how your communication goes, go ahead and roll okay. for pet rock. I got 13. Okay. I got a nine. So you were successful. What are you asking the pet rock? Uh, wh what do you think we should do here? <laughs> That rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the rock says, uh, well, uh, I would try to get past them trees one way or the other. Okay. Then uh, can They're I try to jerks. feed the rock the hot, the leftover hot dog <laughs> as a reward? <laughs> All right. The, 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 the stone split. I'm going to go ahead and let your other roll count for that. This is a dual action, okay, but yeah. we'll go for it. Uh, the rock swallows up and is like, hmm. Whatever. Good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In a very Sounds emo right. way, the rock says, mm, "Whatever." Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> he says, "I've gone from liking rock music to emo music now for some reason. I don't understand mm -hmm. why." All right. Uh, let's go to Sylvie. Um. So I, I try to uh, quietly turn my my axe belt little bit to the back so it's not visible to the end and i uh, <laughs> i want to sidle over to the dog <laughs> and 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 just ask you know what what like using using my friendly hiker ability um 
you know, let it let it slip my hand when you're around a dangerous unknown animal and it, hey, hey, uh well, what is this place? Okay. And uh go ahead and roll what skill are you using here? The the we're gonna go friendly hiker. Friendly hiker. Oh yes, that's right. Go ahead and roll for hiker. This is a pretty friendly dog. He's just rolling in two dice. Thirteen. Okay. And so you succeed, and the dog says, like, oh, yeah, no big deal. I'm pulling for you guys, actually. Uh, this place is uh, this, this, this place is where they have punishment for those that were uh, maybe filled with, uh, filled with wrath throughout their lives and caused a lot of violence. That's usually where people are here. You guys aren't that way, though, because you're here unjustly. And I would keep that in mind. Unjust. That's not fair that you're here. I really feel for you. All right. Everyone is going to roll now to resist. You can roll for the same or for a different skill uh, to resist being hit by flaming apples. Here they come. Go ahead and roll. Tell me what you get. Got a 10. I got a 12 and rolling to deflect with. Oh, oh, no. Hold on. I need to rethink that. Oh, if you want to pull out the axe and risk offending the ant. Yeah. Um, but you've well, already done. Yeah, but they they were asleep. Yeah. They were asleep. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, do you want to use that skill again or a different one? I'm going to use it. Um... I'm going to stick with the lumberjack uh, point, but uh, my skill of dodging falling limbs when people are talking to Sounds good. So that role still stands because it was Yeah, that was a 12. Okay. And uh, let's see. Lily, what's your role? You can, I assume you're doing breakdancing again, unless you do. I am, and I still only have two dice, right? Uh, let's see. No, you uh, that reset from when you were salt. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, 12. Okay. Everybody succeeds again. Um, you were looking to get more than, more than, uh, nine. So uh, let's see. Everyone succeeds and you dodge that. So now we're back to the order of turn. Lily, what are you going to do? Um, I would know that treants are friendly, right? Because I've definitely yes, read Lord of the Rings. Yes, you definitely read Lord point. of the Rings, right? Okay, yeah, totally. Um, is there any way that I could communicate with this treant to, like, basically say, "Hey, you've got like you know these huge ass branches, um, and you're right next to these trees that are being offensive to us? Can you just like, I don't know, like, knock them out, like jog their memory?" For sure. Um, Go ahead and roll to, there are phrases and an alphabet in the book. So roll to use your super librarian uh, skills, it sounds like, to, I didn't mean to tell you which attribute to use, I guess I'm assuming. Uh, If you roll for that, then you can see if you can uh, say the phrase correctly. Uh, 12. And you succeeded. Hooray. So the ent is like, no problem. And smashes the apple trees uh, just to bits right there, Um, maybe even more aggressively than you uh, were were asking. As he smashes these trees down, (coughs) um, the dog goes like, thumbs up. This is fine. You guys are awesome. Hey, look, I got something for you. He's wearing a little bowler hat, if I remember the gif correctly. And he pulls that off and pulls out a golden pea out of the hat. And says, here you go. And oh, uh, as he us. does that, the Ent says, that's not so special. He gives me golden pee every day. <laughs> 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 now, uh, you notice there is a little path right past the Ent. As you thank your new friend and walk down the path, you turn around. All of a sudden, it gets very, very cold. The wind is blowing. And there's ice and snow and stuff kind of slightly in the air, not exactly a big storm. You walk onto a huge frozen lake that you notice. There is a, uh, a, a, as you walk on, there's a set of ice skates 
for each of you that you strap on and you skate onto the ice. We're going to assume that you can do that just fine. No skill needed for that one. As this is you, where we're role playing. This, yes, exactly. <laughs> for, yeah, this would be for me too. As, as you skate forward onto the ice, you see a couple of very interesting things. What you see is you see a little little shack uh, kind of uh, thing off to the side with a bench and a whole bunch of uh, uh, bags. Uh, there's there's hockey pucks, hockey sticks, a lot of hockey gear that's there. Uh, to the left, you see a large throne. There's a huge demon-looking creature in the throne. He's got big old goat horns and nasty-looking demon face and teeth. But he is frozen in ice. He's not moving. In his hand, there's frozen uh, a mug that says, World's Best Boss. And next to him, there is a large desk that has a huge coffee maker and your regular desk stuff. Laptop, little thing of Lysol wipes, and one of those little things that you use to spray uh, dust out of the keyboard of, of a computer uh, that you would. And also one of those little squeezy toys that the little uh, with the little face, uh, you know, for stress balls. Um, you notice that there's a group coming towards you. They're led by... They're led by a man in a business suit and a bunch of demons. As the demons get closer, you notice that each of them seems to be a demon version of a cast member from The Office. You've got Demon Jim, Demon Dwight, uh, Demon Pam, Demon Everybody. But the guy in the suit does not match that show. Um, and he yells out at you and he says, what are you doing here? I'm the boss around here. I did a hostile takeover as soon as I arrived. My name is Carl Gordon Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins. I, if you know, you know, little reference for anybody out there. And I was doomed to come here because I died working on a big project for my company. They didn't get it done, so I had to come here. But I did a hostile takeover. And now, this the, you, you can't, you're interrupting our hockey practice for our team hockey. I'm sorry, you're, we're challenging you. Get over there and get your hockey gear and we're going to play. You notice two goal posts as well. Uh, the rule, by the way, there's only one rule other than normal hockey, is that you have to take two sticks. So go ahead and take double hockey sticks, uh, and, and you move on to the ice. And now you can choose what do we, what are we going to do. Lily, you're first. Can I knock him out behind the knees with my sticks? You can certainly try. I don't like his tood. Yes. Um, what, what skill are you gonna are you gonna use for that? I'm gonna use my windmill break dancing skills. Okay, gonna... go ahead and roll for that. Now, Carl Gordon Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins rolls uh, at a five, so he's a big boss. Oh, I handily knock him over. I hit a twelve. <laughs> you got a wait. Did I say what I had? You said five. No, he rolls five dice. He actually oh. got a, so he actually <laughs> rolled a Crap. He, he rolled a nineteen. <laughs> so you you boogie past him just fine. You swing one of your hockey sticks, but to your surprise, for for a middle aged businessman as he is, he does a big like he's flip, pretty limber like Michelle Kwan or something on his ice skates uh, and and misses just just as he does that. Could I possibly roll? something to make it seem like I accidentally did that. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Do you have one of your, one of your attributes would lend itself to deception? Um, librarian, I would think or creativity, because, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have to kind of BS my way through some things with some people like, Oh yes, we certainly sir have that book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a new wrinkle to a librarian. I didn't know that they did that. All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and roll that. Uh, I got a 16. And unfortunately, yes, he got a 15. So he doesn't believe you at all. He says, nice try. Don't kid a kidder. You're, you're lying to me like some kind of a librarian. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and as he yeah. does that, Demon Jim turns and looks off to the side like, hmm? like half shrugging as if, <laughs> as if he's looking at a camera or something. All right. Uh, let's see. Farius. You're up. Yeah. Um, so I take the pet rock and I s try to usher him on to say like, okay, you play offense. <laughs> um, I don't know if that requires a role or if that's going to be pretty easy for him to do just as a rock. Let's see. But, are uh, you going to tell him to do that? Or are you going to toss him over there? Or, or, or how, I, how I'm going to, 
I'm going to tell him to do that. I'll, I'll use my bef- my pet rock befriending skill okay. to okay. try to uh, so get him to you can thoroughly advise, on our side. Advise slash inspire him to to do. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll for that. I guess. Um, I'm going to roll in a two. Okay. Uh, guess what, though? Uh, you did feed him a boring, uh, subdued hot dog, so I'm going to take away one of your dice on that. So go ahead and roll one <laughs> less. sounds right. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> he's, kind of, he's kind of like, okay. whatever. Yeah. But oh, I, I got I got a better two. roll with that. Okay. I got an 11. Okay. And oh, he's at a, uh, he, uh, he rolled a nine. So he's like, all right. So he... Dives down the middle, um, and and as he as he slides down the ice, he goes in between the players. He hits the puck, goes right into their goal, and a couple things happen right when it goes into the goal. You notice over on a large scoreboard, you get one point. Boom. Not surprising. What is surprising is the other team gets two points. Boom, boom. Also, you notice that when the light flashes on their goal for making a goal, that uh, Carl Gordon Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins gets a little dizzy. And kind of goes into a little bit of a trance, and he shakes it off. Mm. So you intuit from that, of course, that this game is clearly rigged in favor of of the other team. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sylvie, what are you going to do? Um. Oh, let me say one other thing, by the way. Sorry. As the light went off, the other thing that it did is it illuminated under the ice, underneath that goal. Underneath the ice, you notice that there are shadowy figures like people that are frozen in the ice. But one thing you also notice is a large door with, the, with, with, a, a, with letters on the top that say X-I-T. It looks like your standard exit sign, but it's missing an E. But it's frozen under the ice, right under the goal. Um. Um. So, are the, is the puck back in play, or? Yeah, uh, the puck. Yeah, there you go. In a flash of fire, it appears in the middle of the the thing again. But you also notice for the tip off, the other team doesn't wait; they just start going after it. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to uh, get to the puck and. Um, And I'm going to, I'm going to try to push it, like, like, I'm not trying to make a shot because I don't want to get them more points. So I'm trying to kind of go out to the side with it, see if I can actually get it out of bounds. Okay. Um, What skill you or attribute using for that? I'm going to use... My lumberjack skill to kind of oh, you're probably pretty good at swinging. At it like there it. you go. Swing at it yep. like it. Go yeah. for it. So you're rolling against. I'm taking three dice because that is the set amount I had for the puck related rolls. Fourteen. Oof! I only got. Eight. So you succeeded. The puck goes flying. And as a matter of fact, it goes flying. Not so, it's so far out of bounds that it ricochets off the desk and hits the boss in the face, the frozen boss in the throne, cracking the ice around his face, uh, freeing up the face and head area. The boss goes like, Ugh! oh, my word. Ah, Jenkins. Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins, what are what are you doing? You froze me in this chair to take over you. Yeah. He turns to you guys and says, y'all should help me get out of this. Why don't you help me? Come on. Come on. You guys can help me. We'll be friends, right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'm a friendly guy. You can tell. Look at me. All right. Let me go back around to Lily. Um... What's the, um, am I, I'm not still salt, am I, or I'm just, no, no, you're, you're, you're human again. Okay. 
I'm just salty. Um, <laughs> so what do the penalty boxes look like at this hockey rink? Um, oh, <laughs> question. good question. Um, let's see. The penalty box is a, it looks like a normal penalty box, but it is, it has a raging bonfire inside of it. All right. I don't want to go into the penalty box. <laughs> um, hmm. Where's the puck now? Uh, the puck is out of bounds and it looks like demon, uh, the, the Carl Gordon Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins has asked one of his team to go get another puck from the bag and it is demon Stanley. And he's just taking his time. Like whatever. I don't you know, really care about this. <laughs> I am going to go up to like, I, can I get to the puck that's out of bounds? Sure. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to do? Grab it, and um, I'm gonna fling it back at the icy guy. Okay. Go ahead and roll for that. What like, you... try to crack some more ice. All right. What are you gonna? Uh, what what attribute is gonna help um, you with that? I think it has to be my break dancing. I have very strong arms from my head spinning days. All right. Go ahead and uh, uh-huh. what move would you do? Uh, like, how are you gonna propel it even more? What kind of snap or move would you use? I'm a do a spin, okay. Um, on the ice, I'm gonna I'm gonna look kind of figure skaterish for a second, um, <laughs> and I'm right. gonna do it. Okay, because I'm, right. I'm, I'm I'm rolling an eight. So go for that. I would roll. Uh, I would. I'm gonna take a dice away from myself because that's pretty fun. <laughs> so that'll reduce from four to three for me. And I have a. Uh, what do you have, by the way? I have eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven. Eight. You got eight. So I got eight. Okay. So you do. Yeah, however, I'm not used to being on skates, dude. Yeah. However, you, you do miss. And when you throw it, uh, what happens is it, it does miss the boss. Um, but it, it does whack Stanley in the back of the head in which he just goes like, I don't care, but it, it rolls back over. It is. Oh, come on. I didn't miss that bad. Did I <laughs> It ricocheted? <laughs> he slipped on the ice. He slipped on the ice. Yes. There you go. All right. Fair uh, enough. All right. Fu- uh, uh, Farious. What are you going to do? Okay. I'm going to probably try to do the same thing that she just tried, except contortionist. Uh, so I'll do, I'll try to do a windmilly type move. The legs are kicking in the air and then, uh, yeah. And then okay. hit the puck with that. Roll for contortionist. Yeah, which I think was that. Okay, I got seventeen. Okay, I got a ten. So you hit the you hit the demon boss right in the middle of the chest. the uh, The ice starts to crack and break. He stands up. He stretches. <laughs> huge bat wings unfold behind him, and he says, ah, ha, 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 "Evil laugh." He says the words "evil laugh." Yeah, he's been out that. of the game for a minute. <laughs> he picks up two hockey sticks. And he whacks, starts whacking the other the 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 office team around like pucks, and he picks up Gordon Jenkins, Gordon Jenkins, and drops him right into the fiery penalty box. He turns on you, and he says, "Guess what? Y'all shouldn't be here. I'll tell you what. I run a tight ship up in this place, and I may be really, really cruel, mean, and pure evil, but I am not an unfair boss. I am nothing." If, 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 if not fair, he grabs as he grabs his frozen coffee mug, the heat from his hands boils the coffee, dumps it right on the goal, melts the ice. And as he, as he does so from the coffee, also a golden E comes falling down, touches the exit sign door opens, and you're able to proceed out. As you walk out, you walk out back into the neighborhood. You have solved the H-E double puzzle. You have gotten back out into the light and, and this neighborhood no longer seems so typical. It's bright. It's happy. People are out there playing in their yards and doing all kinds of, you know, nice Saturday activities with all of the joy that a neighborhood should have. As you're out and you're kind of coming out of the whole uh, 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 deal, all of a sudden you notice uh, you notice a large, uh, 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 you notice a large winged 
character coming from the sky, coming with with beautiful wings. You see this beautiful creature coming coming down to the earth, and and what do you see but a, a beautiful, wonderful angel that appears in front of you? Um, why don't we pick someone? Let's see, any one of you. Roll one six sided dice, and tell me what number you get. Who wants to do it? I got a one. Okay, you got a one. There are six possible angels that could be visiting you. The one that you did whirl is? Okay, good. This, um, it, you notice that as the, the wings go down and this silhouette, you can make a clear visual that is actually the angel slash ghost from the Polar Express, the home, the homeless man. And as he arrives, he's like, hey, he tips a, has a, a bean can full of coffee that he's 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 drinking and a bindle over his shoulder. Um, he, he whips the bindle around, opens it up and he pulls out your invitations that were the hope that was abandoned as you went into the party. He also pulls out a hole puncher and he punches on the word hope to change each of the words to give you a personalized message as he gives you back your invitations. So he's changing the word hope. Why don't each of you roll one dice and tell me what number you get? Six. Six. Three. Five. Uh, six, six, and three. Could I get one of you sixers to roll again? I think it was six, three, and five. Oh, six, three, and five. Perfect. Okay, who got the... I rolled another six. Six, three, and five. Okay, good. Do you want me to roll again? No, no. Did you get the six? I got the six. Okay, we'll go in order. Okay, so he, he punches out holes in your ticket... Oh, I should, I'm sorry, ticket, <laughs> invitation. Where did I get that from? Okay, so he punches out holes, and you get uh, the P and the E have been, are left. And he says, your future, you will, you will excel greatly as a physical education teacher, should you so choose. Uh, that, that is a br- brilliant, bright future that you will have. You'll be the world's most successful, wealthy PE teacher, uh, whether you choose to work in education or as a fitness coach on Instagram. Then he uh, he turns to let's see who got the five. I uh, Silva. Okay, Silva. He uh, punches your ticket, and what you notice is that the E and the O are the only letters remaining, but they've switched around so that it's E O, as in E O. And he says, "You will find it's." I'll tell you what, Captain E O, overdue for a remake. And let's be let's be honest, problematic. Am I right? So we need to revisit that. You're going to write, direct, and star in the new Captain EO, and it will be the most successful. You're going to EGOT with this thing. Somehow it will go across all mediums, and you're going to to EGOT with this. So that's your reward. And let's see, uh, that leaves us with uh, Fur- Farious. You got a three? Yes. Okay. He punches, 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 and the three letters remaining on yours rearranged are P, O, and E, as in Poe. And he says, your reward is you are going to become the world's greatest Edgar Allan Poe imitator. And you will travel around this great land teaching people all about Edgar Allan Poe, creeping them out every Halloween, and Mm -hmm. also giving them like mysteriously dry and boring and strange poetry that seems like a word salad. Yeah. Everywhere that you go. So you have all been given these rewards for escaping from the H-E double hockey stick challenge that you have gone through. So give yourselves a hand. Good job, guys. Oh, (laughs) really did it. (laughs) Yay. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, for doing this and being here. That's going to do it for the the episode for today. Um, Well, one quick reminder. This is going to come out before then. Uh, Anybody who is listening... um, uh, stay tuned for more stuff. I'm going to have some more stuff about RPGs and how we can uh, maybe use those. I hope everybody had a, a good time listening as we did playing. Also, uh, August uh, the 29th, which is the last Thursday in August, is going to be the Broken Brain's third annual uh, live stream for overdose awareness. You can go to dwighthurst.com slash live to learn more about that. Everybody is is welcome to watch and join. There will be a link uh, the day of at that, at that very 
that very address that I just gave that will allow you to join the live stream and, and be able to be on it as well. London, you've been on quite a bit the last two years when we did it as well. It was uh, yeah. always nice to have you on there. Yeah, it's fun. As well. So hopefully you'll reappear and, and everybody is invited to, to do so as well on that. It is for the International Opioid Overdose Awareness Day. So that will be that. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Court and Parts Podcast Network. To listen to more Court and Parts shows, visit courtemparts.com.